1995, a federal-style front portico was added, complete with columns and banister railings that were common in the 1820s. Today, the graceful portico welcomes racehorse enthusiasts eager to see one of the world's most famous horses, Triple Crown winner, Seattle Slough. Seattle Slough is stabled on grounds that have been preserved. Like Michelle Prim, Bob Clay has taken steps to ensure that farmland will remain untouched by development. He formed the Bluegrass Conservancy, an organization that allows individuals to donate their land for farm use only, and he donated his. Bob Clay's easement donation was the first one um, in central Kentucky, and we hope that it will set the pace for additional easements to be granted and to preserve this really incredibly unique um, environment. Michelle Prim and Bob Clay, two Kentuckians committed to restoring and saving an important part of their state's heritage. Kentuckians are fiercely proud of their legacy. That pride is motivating them to protect and preserve their history, from horse farms to churches to beautiful old homes. I'm Bob Vila. Join us again as we showcase and celebrate communities and the people in them working to restore America. All right, guys, I found some more footage of the tornado tape in Litchfield. It's on this tape. What determines a good life, wealth, love, or life's journey itself? Meet people who found the answers they were seeking and now enjoy the good life. If this isn't the good life, then there's no such thing. Their stories will inspire you on The Good Life. Tonight at 1030 on HGTV, Home and Garden Television. I'm Bob Vila. Next week, Restore America travels to Vermont. Near Burlington, an old army fort becomes the unlikely setting for families to own a piece of history. And in Manchester, the restoration of the Robert Todd Lincoln Mansion and Garden. Join me for Restore America next Sunday night at 10 on HGTV, Home and Garden Television. in Halfway, Oregon, near the Hell's Canyon Recreation Area. Use one of Atria's locations in Louisville or Elizabethtown. Do you understand what your kids are saying? What's up, G? Do you sometimes feel like you need a translator? Little Woody be flossing with his blank. News Channel 32 breaks it. Through the homes and through most of the large factories in the industrial park. Now, in addition, the aerial pictures uh, and the damage on the ground is providing important information to observers from the U.S. Weather Service, from the Weather Service office in Louisville. Two meteorologists are taking a look at the damage because they can look at the trees and and the roofs and the other damage to tell just how strong the storm was yesterday. And in talking with uh, one of the meteorologists, Norm Reitmeyer, a few moments ago, he says that uh, uh, they're looking at uh, whether this tornado is perhaps an F2 or an F3 on a scale of 1 to 5, with the 5 being the heaviest winds and the most damage in a storm. And they'll uh, look at the damage, and the meteorologist will come up with a definite figure, in their estimate anyway, of the damage of the tornado and how strong it was a little bit later this afternoon perhaps an F2 or an F3 on a scale of 1 to 5. Again, we're uh, waiting for word from Lieutenant Governor Henry in a little bit here uh, as far as uh, what the state will do and uh, perhaps the feds as far as some help to come to Lichfield in Grayson County. Uh, this is the first step toward doing all of the uh, paperwork type things, declaring the area an emergency, a disaster area, so to speak, so that uh, that process can get moving as far as to bring some state and federal disaster relief here, some money for low interest loans and otherwise to help in the rebuilding process, both for the businesses and the homes damaged here. Again, much more tonight at 10 as well. Let's go to Kevin Raymer now. And uh, Kevin, I understand that uh, some of the folks doing the cleanup possibly could get wet, maybe even have some severe weather here as well. There's some possibility, Chris, of a little bit more in the way of thunderstorm action this afternoon. Now, the good news at this point is all is quiet right now. Across some big insurance companies like to argue that people aren't injured in real sites 
after the tornado yesterday, there were some arrests. We don't know if that involved looting. We don't have a full report on that just yet. And this very small town, this very small county is already overtaxed. They had problems with a shooting last night. A man was shot some five times. None of this, we believe, was related to the tornado. But uh, very, some hectic, really some hectic times for the people here in Grayson County. Now, Lieutenant Governor Steve Henry is here earlier. He's down now touring some of the area. We'll have more on News Channel 32 a little bit later. For now, I'm Bill Alexander in Grayson County. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Bill. Actually, we'll have that right now as Bill Basin County? Governor Henry is visiting the Where the frick are you from? Henry arrived shortly before noon after touring the area by helicopter. He stopped at Litchfield Industrial Park and will get a first-hand look at homes damaged by the tornado. Governor Patton is on an international trade trip to Japan. The damage in Litchfield was the worst in the area, but other parts were hit hard as well. Yeah, meteorologist Jim O'Brien's in the Weather Center with more on that now, Jim. Yeah, it was really an interesting storm cell that uh, passed right over areas, actually a Hancock County, and then worked through Breckenridge County, depositing some heavy hail. In fact, we have reports of one to two inch size in diameter, or even baseball size hail that worked across the areas of Hardensburg. Then, as course, uh, of course, it actually touched down into the form of a tornado near Litchfield. It worked its way off towards the south into the southeast. Roofs were blown off. Of course, trees were turned around as well. Now, we're still looking at the thunderstorm outlook for today with the greatest risk or the best potential of thunderstorms really setting up once again across the areas of what county. You're looking at the industrial district. Several businesses destroyed and flattened. You look at the twisted, mangled roof of one of the businesses there. The twister that tore through Grayson County hit homes and businesses with equal force. Now, hundreds of people are wondering when or if they'll be able to go back to work. Andy Alcock is live in News Chopper 32 with details. Andy, how about it? Well, that's the million-dollar question right now, Rick. But preliminary estimates to businesses alone are millions of dollars in damages. Of course, the final figure won't be known until all the debris is cleared away and insurance folks have had a chance to take a look. As we take a look now live down on News Chopper 32... You, we can see the damage to the Leggett and Platt factory, just one of several businesses feeling the effects of yesterday's tornado. Like every Wednesday, Sidney Alvey was at work at Litchfield's Leggett and Platt factory, the plant where sofa bed parts are made. But it was far from a normal day for the tool and die worker. Alvey and his fellow employees were helping clean up the day after a tornado ripped through the plant, causing major damage and leaving 250 jobs, including Aldi's, in jeopardy. Well, they're not really telling us anything right now. I guess they're just going to see what happens, you know, as far as uh, the other part of the building is not that bad. This is the bad end. Across the street from Leggett and Platt, workers at Styline, an office furniture plant, were also cleaning up. The tornado demolished one side of that plant, leaving a mountain of rubble and the business shut down. We have a um, structural engineer coming in, then that's going to evaluate the situation so then we can determine um, where we need to make our repairs and so we can get up on our feet as soon as possible. Local leaders say several businesses suffered major crippling damage, affecting an estimated 2,000 jobs in a town with only 6,500 residents. 2,000 jobs plays a big part in a small community and, uh, you know, we... Uh, we're going to work hard to try to help them in every way we can. You know, everybody here pretty much well needs a job, you know. And if it's gone, we don't know what's going to happen. They haven't told us nothing yet on that. As we take a look live down from News Chopper 32, local leaders tell us the unemployment rate in Grayson County has been running at less than 4%. Of course, depending on what happens to these damaged businesses, that figure could take a dramatic turn for the worse. Rick? All right, thank you, Andy. Now, after looking at some of the damage in Litchfield's Industrial Park, it's amazing that no one was seriously hurt. As Andy showed us at the Styline plant, where an entire side of the building was demolished, only five people suffered injuries. They were brought to the hospital and later released. Plant management credits a storm safety plan employees had practiced in recent weeks. The company had also recently purchased a weather radio and a new public address system to warn employees that were outside. So all those factors combined with um, four or five uh, lead people making uh, smart decisions was the reason that we were able to avoid any serious injuries. The company safety team from its headquarters in Huntingburg, Indiana, helped install that plan. And as you can see, if you would like to help the victims of this disaster... Tornado could have been your house, could have been my house, could have been her house, could have been anyone's. The Red Cross is coordinating with other organizations to get help where it's needed most. Most of the families, and what's great about this community is, is uh, they've got friends and neighbors and relatives that, that have taken them in during their time of need, and that really helps. And plans are already being made for long-term relief. 
for those who lost their jobs and their homes. We will be able to uh, pay utility bills. We will be able to possibly pay rent and uh, whatever that they need. We'll find a way to do it. But they're so sweet to come by and, and offer us food and stuff. Helps a bit, huh? Yes, it helps a great bit, <laughs> I'll tell you. Now, it's ironic. Many of these businesses here in the industrial park often donate to, to charities and relief agencies in times of need, and now they're the ones who need help from those very agencies. Let's go live now upstairs to Sky 11. George Sells has more on how things look from up above. George? Well, Lawrence, looking down from up here, what's striking is just the incredible amount of work this community has, Litchfield and Grayson County. It's a hazy, humid day, a miserable one to be doing heavy work outside, but that's just what dozens of families are faced with here in Litchfield and the Grayson County area. The good news, despite the conditions being right, there's been no more thunderstorms, no more severe weather, though the skies are starting, starting to look a little bit threatening at this hour. Now, this area has been a beehive of activity for the entire day, as seemingly everyone in town is pitching in to begin the cleanup. Insurance adjusters have been moving literally from house to house trying to help answer the hardest question and that's the question of where to start. I mean take a look at that and you try to tell me where you'd begin if you had to start the cleanup down there. That's what folks are faced with at this hour. I think at this point one thing they're hoping for the most is probably just the weather will hold and they won't have to face any more severe weather tonight because I'll tell you what, if anybody deserves a break right now, it's the people down here who face so much work. Not just in Litchfield, but remember this thing cut about a 10-mile path across Grayson County from west to east, and uh, there are a lot of homes that were damaged and destroyed outside of Litchfield. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we're going to show you what may have been the last one to be hit by the twister, and it also may have been hit the hardest. Live in Sky 11, George Sells, WHAS 11 News. All right, George, thanks. And we're now learning today more information about the characteristics of this tornado. You say at one time it was similar to what moved through Bullock County in 96. Yeah, Bullock County actually was an F3 and an F4. This was an F3. So uh, it, the Bullock County tornado did have a, a little period where it was an F4 and did a little more damage. That's but, winds of about what at one time? Oh, an F4 has winds above 175 miles an hour. F3 has winds up to about 175 miles an hour. And that's the Weather Service went out today, and they always look at the damage, and that's how they determine how many tornadoes there were and uh, what it was. And as you see in Litchfield, it started out as three funnel clouds turned in, though, to one actual tornado that actually touched the ground. And it was an F3 carrying winds of about 175 miles an hour. There was also a second tornado in Burdick uh, near Highway 55 in Taylor County. That was an F3. Zero. They checked all the damage across all those southern counties, and uh, there were no other tornadoes, just those two. And that videotape, we've been seeing that classic look of, there mm -hmm. it is, the first video we have and seen you can yet see, of the see how you can see more than one, if, uh, if you saw there was like more than one funnel cloud that combined, you could just see them sort of merging into one tornado. All right, Beth, thanks. Jean? All right, you two. The pictures coming out of Litchfield, Kentucky, are hauntingly familiar to people living in Pioneer Village. A devastating tornado ripped through that city nearly four years ago. As Eric Zager reports, time has put the houses and businesses back together, but it has not healed all wounds. Phil Radford remembers the tornado that leveled hundreds of homes and damaged some businesses as if it touched down yesterday in Pioneer Village. Sounded like it's plucking a chicken, just plink, 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 plink. It's been nearly four years since the Twister tore through the city, but Radford still feels like he's paying for it today. It brings it all back. The tornado was double trouble. It took a chunk out of his concrete yard decoration business. Where it goes up and breaks over, it took the uh, biggest part of that roof off. And it left its mark on his house. What do you think was going to be here when you got here? Nothing. Much to his surprise, Radford's home was still standing. His barn, garage, and another building was not. They had failed to pay down my policy, so it cost me $12,000, $14,000 to get it put back up. Radford didn't realize the building was not covered, and to boot, he was underinsured. Out of pocket, he figures the 1996 tornado cost him $30,000. It uh, hurts, you know, when you have to come up with that, that kind of money. To top it off,